Welcome back to Bourbon Over Baseball with your host Bob and we have co-host Matt today. How's it going? So we have uh, a lot of people couldn't make it today but the show must go on so we'll do a couple of these probably tonight and so you guys could see some more of the breakdowns of the teams. Uh, we did have a suggestion by Bradley on the YouTube, uh, one of our subscribers for the next team. So we'll get with that one right now. Yeah, so that's theirs. <laughs> Is it like their victory chant? Uh, well, it looks like it's like part of an old... I could not find anything on them. Part of an old one, and then it jumps into this like... Uh, like <laughs> yeah, but um, I don't know. It's still pretty cool. I like the hip hip. Hey! Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay, so anyway, the reason Bradley won it because... Um, Last time we did um, the Tampa Rays, not exactly last time, but recently, and Greg Vaughn was someone else's one of their players, and Bradley wanted the OG Greg Vaughn, uh, which is one of his favorite players to play with. So he's on the Reds, and he said the Reds are a fun team to talk about, so we'll get to them. Uh, first up, we have Aaron Boone. There so we, we have, go. Yeah, so we have a manager. Actually, this card does see a lot of play. Um, yeah. I assume it's because of the low cost and seven on base A speed with decent fielding, and he's got a decent chart. Yeah, I mean it's it's one of those where you're not looking at him early, but later as you're filling everything out, like you if you're gonna go, oh, I need a third baseman that can get on base ish, mm -hmm. and you're really looking for fielding if you're going that late. But it's like he's cheaper. You're getting the speed A, which is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I you know obviously I'd hate to have to get a seven on base guy, but he has a lot of other things that are good here. Obviously, the A speed. Obviously, the uh, third base being in the plus range here with two of a max three. Um, 240 is, fun. is very valuable. And, and like I said, good chart. Yeah. Um, low walks. Gets on single at seven here. It's great. Um, obviously, you know, with the cards, and we've been talking about this lately on the Discord and the Twitter, um, with the A speed being just a straight 20, We've been switching over on our statistics from SPD, which is a speed variation, which is a better variation than the one that Shodown had. Um, but even that wasn't a good, an absolute metric. Um, yeah. One of the guys on the Discord and on Twitter was able to show us a uh, base running um, statistic. And um, so therefore, we were able to use that. And what I'm noticing on there is uh, with the BSR statistic on fan graphs yeah. is... Um, the elite people are like really fast and like get this like quote unquote bonus in our type of game. But like most people end up being like 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 speed. Like and that makes sense. Well, and it does. And if you think about it, like, you know, when, when I was looking at it initially, it was like, okay, well, Larry Walker was like really high up in the, in the 96 season. Well, that, that didn't really make a lot of sense. And Lofton wasn't so high. Well, when I read it with the BSR statistics, Lofton's like a 24. No one's even close. Yeah, you know the next. I mean, when I say no one's close, the next closest guy is like a twenty-two. And there's only a handful, and then it starts going twenty-one, twenty, and then it starts dropping quick. So, um, it is interesting then to see if, when you have the showdown cards and go, okay, this guy's a straight twenty. And I'm sure we're gonna eventually get away from, and maybe this will happen in our next set uh, with this the, the letters A, B, and C. Um, yeah, because it really is nice with the. Um, I mean. I think it like tricks people when you see a guy say, well, he's a B speed 18 or a B speed 17. It's like, you know, well, he's only like three lower than what a, what a quote unquote a speed guy would be. Right. It throws you off. So that is what's nice about Aaron Boone here. But I think that BSR thing is going to be really nice going forward. Yeah. And I, and I liked when we were talking about the total zone or the RTOT, like that one almost kind of gives a good measure too. You can tell who, you know, cause it says zero is the average 10 is like, you're way above average. Yep. And it's like guys that are above 10, you're like, oh, well, these guys were at the top of the top. Yeah, it does a nice job. The BSR does the same thing where it says zero is league average. And so, like, I think it was, like, I don't know who it was in 96, like Jeff Cirillo or somebody random was, mm -hmm. like, like the lowest guy in the whole league, like the worst base runner. I was like, oh, well, then you're getting the D speed. <laughs> yeah. um, but what you could do is once you make the metric, then you just can go year to year. Because right. zero is always league average, you yeah. know? So if you go, I'm going to set it up so that 
D speed goes, you know, uh, what, like five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then everything, you know, and you just go in five thing increments, and then you say middle of the gap is like 12, 13, 14, 15, somewhere in that range. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe you say, you know, 13, or maybe you say 14 through 16 is middle of the range. Then you could say that's zero, you know, or that's league average. Right. Or maybe you can, you can lower it and say league average is a 12 or something, and then anybody below the league average is awful at running and anyone above. Um, this happened yesterday with the Derek Jeter I posted, and someone was like, wow, it sucks he's a C-speed 12. I said, well, it sucks if you're, again, when you're basing it from – if I played him in this 2000 set, right. you'd be like, ah, it sucks. But when you're pace playing him in the, just the 96 set, it would make a lot of sense. And I think going forward, we'll try to be better with better statistics so then everyone will get a little bit better every time we do right. this. And I, and I know we've been working so hard with like the doubles and <sighs> yeah. all these other things. Like I mean, Peter in the last month has come up with all these great calculations of percentages, and he's really been hammering that out too. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, because if we do better, Peter's really good with the formulas. Yeah. And uh, me and Matt have been really tackling, like, fielding. And now we were looking into speed, um, which was nice. Um, Matt posted a card, and someone was uh, able to show us a better metric, uh, which I loved. And so I was like, okay, man, if we can, you know, if Peter can knock down some better formulas and we can get even better with fielding and better with speed, like it just makes everything so nice. <laughs> yeah, and I think the more that we, the better we get as close to a consistent, because obviously nothing's ever going to be perfect. But like, once we have almost like a set one, you can almost look back and be like, okay, this is a level playing field. Here's where these guys rank all yep. the time. Yep. Absolutely, and I know that a couple of people in the Discord are doing other things with like, you know, weighted on base average and stuff like that. Yeah. Which is great. So I love the people that are using other types of statistics to do things. Um, obviously, we're just trying to sort of keep it as short on as it can be. But yeah. even that, we try to break the mold a bit. <laughs> and, and the best part with that is, like, you know, there's all these different people doing things. Nobody's got the right way. Everybody has fun with it. Yeah, I mean, like, That's the main thing. We're just here for fun anyways. But then you can even combine them at some sort of range like oh yeah you know we got one guy that makes his this way and you like that version of a player better just toss him in there as long as his points are fair to everybody else's yeah yeah and i like to do mine in like ranges i guess so like i'm not i usually don't play 2000 with 2018 right um i have done it but i don't usually but i would play like the 2018 2019 sets together i play the 2000 2001 sets together yeah um, I might even play your 05 set with when they're close enough. I usually try to play them. The 96 right. set is the oldest one I've made. It's gonna and, be st- and even then, like if you're combining everything, it's like well, you just don't have point format at that point then. Yeah, and that's what we've done before. Yeah, there those are fun for like blind drafts and say it's oh, like, yeah. fuck it, you know, you don't know what you're <laughs> gonna get. But I think when my 96 is done, it's gonna be really fun uh, in in a, in, a, in a combine or in a contained thing. And then as we develop more league. and more sets, it's going to be probably easier to transition. Yeah. And hopefully everyone will have that ready for Showdown Con 2021. <laughs> Next up, Mike Cameron. So this is uh, obviously uh, the Reds version. I think I'm used to the Mariners version. Yeah. Um, that was the one I really liked. But this is still a pretty solid card here when you got the A-Speed 8 OF plus 2, which is huge because you can play them anywhere. Right. Um, and another great chart. I mean, so we just looked at two, well, a little bit of walk heavy, but big single plus range here. So two, we just let off with two A speed guys with plus fielding and good charts. Pretty solid right now. Yeah, I like him a lot. And it's, you know, he's, whenever I think of him, I think of his 2001 Mariners card. Yep, that's, that's but, the one I always used to play with. Yeah. That's funny. But, <laughs> and I, I never really used this one. And it's like, this is a pretty good card. Yeah. I think I might have played this card randomly in a, in, a, yeah. in a draft but i've never like constructed with this guy right and because when i always played it was like i combined 2000 2001 and as you get to the pennant run you get the new center fielder and then greg vaughn and it's like so it's always hard to fit cameron in sometimes yeah. well i like this card i think it's a good pose and gr- yeah. uh, a good solid card i always like he the... was he was like this one of the centerpieces of the griffey trade wasn't he that I do not know, um, and we'll get to Griffey later. I was always just—I know Griffey wanted to come to the Cincinnati because uh, 
because his family was there. But man, right yeah. when he went to the Reds, it was like total drop off. <laughs> I, I remember in like grade school, we had like a famous Ohio in report and one kid did Griffey and people were like, he's not from Ohio. That's not fair. And so, like he just told the teacher he was, even though he was, you know, just playing for the Cincinnati Reds. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have this is uh, one of the ones Jeff likes to talk about. Uh, Sean Casey. So we got a foil. Um, again, <laughs> I, I'm not too impressed with this card in in overall general. He basically here is, a, is another name recognition. He was a power guy. I don't know what he did that year, uh, but having a C speed guy with a nine. A lot of singles. Not bad with double range, but again, C-speed really hurts here. But Jeff yeah. loves this card because he likes to say how unflattering this picture is. <laughs> he said, of all the pictures you could pick from, this is the one you picked for Sean Casey. He looks like he just got, like, out, like, picked off at first or something. <laughs> or running to first, you know. And yeah, Oh, that's... man, I didn't even notice this. Look, I was like, legs are chopped off at the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, he's. I wonder if that's like just my card or if all of them look like that. Oh, I would imagine they're all pretty much like that. But I know the picture itself, though I do like the sleeveless look, <coughs> is like super unflattering for him. Right. He looks like he's Especially struggling. for like a foil. You want The foil guys should be like a little bit extra time. Yeah, he, he is very odd foil for this team because mm. like there's so so many. Like Mike Cameron, I, would, I like more. Yeah, right. If, again, we haven't seen the whole team yet, but... And right. I know, in my opinion, Greg Vaughn would be the right. one. But just looking at the two that we just looked, three that we just looked at, you know, obviously Mike Cameron sits above this guy, in my opinion. And and I had to look it up just because I, I brought it up. So he was in the trade for Griffey. Oh, okay. It was him, uh, um, Jake Meyer, who was a prospect, Antonio Perez and Brett Tomko for Griffey. But the part that I found the funniest was the two years prior, he was traded from Chicago to the Reds for Paul Konerko. Oh, I, I think about how that. the White Sox, like how their franchise was built around Canerco in the 2000s. Like that's a yeah, it's a pretty nice trade. Yeah. So Canerco for Griffey. Hmm. No. <laughs> Canerco for uh, well, I guess technically, yeah. That's like that's kind of my 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 joke. <laughs> yeah. Um. Next up, Danny Graves. So we got a nice closer bonus here. Um, we got four control, for one sixteen out. It's a pretty solid guy. I like the no doubles here. Just yeah. seems a little pricey for 180. Um, this guy also looks like he's like coming out of the grave with his. <laughs> looks a little he old. Looks a little... Um, and he came to the Indians like way later. Yeah, I was like, I feel like I remember him playing for the Indians. He also looks oddly like chubby in this photo. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's just like the wind got. In his yeah, it like blew his jersey up. It just, I, it's probably not true, but man, he just looks a little odd shaped. <laughs> and I always thought it was crazy because I, I feel like the Reds are the only team that had two closers in the original set. Yeah, and the other one we'll talk about here in a little bit. It's another foil. Um, so double closer bonuses. Double closer bonus. Uh, this card's obviously not bad. Big ground ball range and yeah. the no doubles is nice. It's just a tad pricey. I, well, he got the double bone, the no double bonus, and the closer bonus. So <laughs> it's a double double bonus. Then. A double double. Um, next up, Pete um, Harnish, Harnish, yeah. Harnish. I would say Harnish. Harnish. Um, so standard four, one through sixteen out guy. Um, this is the kind of guy that usually I look at towards the people I like. Now I again I always usually lean to Brad Radke. Um, and I'm pretty sure Racky's got the extra inning um, for only a 40 more points, I think. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's what we. What's up? I think that's kind of how we figured what the what an extra inning was was 40 points. Yeah. So it just depends on what you're into here. So if you're, I guess, go a little bit lower, I'd have to like really get into like their ground ball ranges and what kind of team you're building. Yeah. Um, seven through. I was a big f big user of this guy. You were. Yeah. He's, he was he's not usually bad. my number two. Yeah, he was my number two type guy because I, I usually had like Pedro or Kevin Brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this is a pretty solid card if you're looking at that 4, 1 through 16 range, which in my opinion is a really nice range. It's usually what the lowest yeah. I want to go unless I have to punt. My strategy usually is three solid relief, sorry, three solid starters and I completely punt on starter number <laughs> four and I usually try to just manage that game with some bullpen or just to get lucky and i just try to win easy three out of four games or try to split every once in a while and usually that does well for me it did okay here and there but um i think I, when we do the 2019 we'll see how it does in real life or not real life yeah. but <laughs> might be real life at this point yeah 
Next up, now this guy gets drafted all the time, Barry Larkin. Uh, very good card, especially reasonably priced. Yeah. Um, so you're getting a especially nine. Especially with all the shortstops in this set. Yeah, so what do we just have? Sean Casey was, what, 320? 20, yeah. So for 40 more points, you're getting a, a, a nine also. But now you're getting an A speed and at the top tier of defensive positioning. So a shortstop plus five. I mean, he's got more walks than Casey, and Casey has more homers, and you know they always gave out more points for homers. Yeah. But, like, I mean, this card's fantastic. This card usually goes very early. Um, obviously, in my league's defense, he, people just love the defense. Yeah. Um, but I just think if you just, again, I, the defense is nice, but just a 9A speed for 360 is pretty solid here. And I feel like the 16 single plus is nice. I mean, obviously, I think Casey had the 16 double. Mm-hmm. Um. But I just, I just really try to avoid C speed guys if I can. Yeah. I mean, especially in a, in a league where this is so black and white, where it's C is ten, B is fifteen, A is twenty. Right. Um, getting an A speed guy on second base is huge. And, so, and especially with like how we've talked about position depth, like he's maybe like the sixth or seventh best shortstop in the set, and it's like he's really good. Well, I think it's just because he's so um, price valuable. So, like, yeah. was it how? What's normal like five hundred and ten or something? Or is he? You no, know, he's four. He's four nine. Or Jeter's four ninety. I think Nomar's a little cheaper than Jeter. Okay. But then, like, A Rod's five ten. Yeah, well, A Rod's card is, is stupid. But like, if I'm looking at some, I I, I don't want to spend a zillion dollars, and I'll just yeah. go one on base lower than say a Nomar, who has terrible yeah. defense. And I don't, and no more is not a speed. No. So it's like Barry, Barry falls in a really nice range. Like I said, he yeah, gets drafted a I'm, lot. I'm thinking of like Omar is 410 for yes. a 10 on base speed, a shortstop plus five with no Homer. Yeah. For 360, I'd rather just take Larkin. Yeah. So take, that's a good, five. that's a good comparison. So you have Omar for, for 50 more points. Um, you get the extra on base. So yeah. is it worth it to get the extra on base with no Homer? You know that, and that's where that trade off is. It depends on where he's going to fit in your lineup. Both of them get drafted whenever we play. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. just depends on what you're looking for. Maybe you really wanted a, an Omar type, but he got drafted, so then you're looking at maybe Barry. But usually Barry, Om, Omar, and A-Rod, they're all picked up. Usually Nomar, Garcia Parr, does not get picked up. Wow. Um, just because I think he's too expensive and he doesn't really offer you anything. Um, mm-hmm. Again, that's just how it is in my leagues. Uh, how I've seen. Again, I don't, I don't run deep leagues. I would always want to run. Like I said, I think I, I've talked about Jeff. The next one we should do is like a two thousand or something, and just AL only. So it yeah, cuts, we were cuts talking about that down. on Twitter. I feel like. Yeah, I, I really think that's a nice way to do it. When we only have like eight to ten guys that can play in person, and if yeah. you cut the now if you cut the um, instead of getting twenty teams, we just cut the pool in half. Right. It's like okay, and and we could do two two leagues. You could do an AL league and an NL league, but yeah. I think an NL league would be really fun because then you could do deeper. You could get bench players and play the NL rules. Which and and been, I think it just adds some fun strategy because, yep. like we, you know, obviously we're from Cleveland, so we've been DH our whole life. Oh yeah, I mean, and trust so I me, think I usually will strategies. default to DH, but yeah. I get the argument for the other way. <laughs> and it, I think it would just be fun because, like, I've never played pitcher's bat, so yeah. I feel like it would just be a good time. Like, so for people that don't stupid. know, when pitcher's bat, you could bat them anywhere in your lineup. You really can, yeah. but they automatically just roll on the pitcher's chart. It's just it's automatic. They just roll in the pitch chart. Whatever happens, whatever happens. So you might. It's just like having a five or a six on base, basically, <laughs> at yeah. the end. And you're rolling off the pitcher's chart. And yeah. You just hope you get that eighteen or nineteen. Yeah. So what's fun is it. I like that, and especially in a game, maybe in real life, I like DH because he's like the power guy. Hypothetically, yeah. even though lately it's been shitty and, and statistically for MLB, but in showdown where a lot of it's dice roll luck manager decisions start to add the strategic elements to it and that's when i think when do you take that guy out and throw in your pinch hitter and bring in your reliever then it starts to get really fun and the more decisions you can make without adding strategy cards i think is the better you can do (laughs) yeah i think it'd be a lot of fun because you know i think a lot of the teams now bat their pitcher eighth so that when they turn the lineup over you have another guy after the pitcher just in case yeah you know then later when you pinch hit anyway you're probably pinch hitting in the fifth sixth inning and then, you know, you just start that all over. And you yeah, can I did, I'd have to look around. back at the old rules. And if anybody anybody listening knows what the speed of the pitcher is on base. It's got to be a C. Well, is it is it C in 2000? But, like, obviously, is it just 
because it's the lowest rank. So if I did it in quote unquote 96, would he be a five speed? <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause that's, that's my lowest. Yeah. Um, so I guess if anybody knows that rule, just let me know because I would like to know what it is before I get into like, we do easy do C speed 10, but like I have like Jeff Cirillo in the 96 set. Who's like, I think a six or a seven speed. Wow. I think he's a seven speed, but the lowest technically is a five. So like, obviously I can't make Jeff Cirillo slower than a pitcher. <laughs> but like but like that sucks because like Shohei Otani's a fast pitcher. <laughs> right. Yeah, cuz he's a, isn't he like a speed A? Well, I, I, I uh, is he? Is he he might be like a 19. Yeah, I have to go check my card. I uh it's downstairs but um but yeah, I mean, it, that's what's so funny. It's like if they don't have one listed, like he defaults as a C speed 10 or if your league goes yeah. lower, he maybe your league says he's the lowest possible. <laughs> Mm-hmm. so anyway. i think mean, that's a ton of that's a fun strategy i mean yeah you get deeper rosters deeper i kind of like want him to be like c speed 10 and then like mike piazza the catcher and like steal second <laughs> 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 you like really just rub it in yeah right um next up pokey reese another guy again, i'm liking this reds team yeah. um another guy a speed so we just had what five four out of five a speed guys another plus fielder so we have what, boone at second or third and then yeah. uh, with a plus two, and then so he's got plus twelve infield. It's very solid. Yeah, um, Larkin and Reese up the middle. Yeah, Pilkey Reese gets picked up a lot. Low walk, yeah. so we got only a five walk here, and our A speed seven. You don't like the seven here, but for two forty, we're talking about Aaron Boone again, and thirteen single plus probably gonna be on second base at a thirteen. That's that's huge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and and if you get on first with a, a six, you're probably gonna steal. Yeah, yeah, because so. <laughs> unless they're like. Really, they went all in yeah. on, on defense catcher, but even then, what the best is like Pudge with eleven, so you still have a you know fifty fifty shot. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems it seems like a, I, I've seen this card draft a lot. Usually, it's late because Alomar, uh, mm-hmm. Shumpert, all those guys are going early. Uh, and Gardo Alfonso, he's always Randy Velarde. Those guys are always gone. Um, it's the, it's when you want to sort of punt but get that plus five that you end up getting a Pokey Reese. Next up, Scott Sullivan. I've drafted this guy a ton. So here we, here we go. You can get a for thirty less points than Danny Graves. You can get Scott Sullivan. Yeah. Um, and get a six one through fifteen out. I would much rather have this guy. Um, and he's great value. I I I've drafted a handful of these. This is like the real Kumar type. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know the one fifty point six control guys. They they find a nice range. Obviously, I think these guys are all undervalued in real life. Or sorry, in showdown. Um, what. Yeah, you're picking this guy up. Yeah, it's like they're this bullpen's insane too. Yep. Really... Yeah, they're 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 a fun little com- uh, team that's sort of combined here. Yeah. Uh, in a nutshell, but um, I know I've picked up Sullivan in the past, and he's always finding a spot. Any of these six control guys with around the 150 range, especially because the again in OO it was so the the high end was so limited for point value, like. You're talking about like a three control guy was like a hundred points or fifty more points. You can't squeeze in a Scott Sullivan and just like lock your yeah. bullpen down. I mean, and, and like we always go back to John Johnson. It's like if you take, you know, if you're playing and you're you you think about it, you go, okay, I have to have a closer, so I'm going to take one, and you could probably take a cheap one, and you just go like Sullivan, Klein, John Johnstone, and it's like, oh, well, good luck. Yeah, I mean, like if there, there's a couple of the big guys who who the six one through six counts. We got Johnstone. And then who's the other big one? Um, Derek Lowe. Uh, yeah. So you so you so you might get Johnson. The other guy is probably grabbing Derek Lowe. And then yeah. as you get through, it's like okay, well, where am I going to find a couple more? Real Cormier. You can find you know Scott yeah. Sullivan. There's a, there's a handful of these like Alan Embry and all them that they just fit in nicely. <laughs> yeah. The the sixes were heavy in, in this. It feels like. Yeah. And again, we don't we don't know exactly how they figured it out and. And we'll ask those questions, and we'll try to figure out if we can find out from people. But um, you won't see this in the sets that we're making newer than this. Um, we're a little spread out now. Again, they didn't really have many one twos and ones right. and twos in the OO, so they could have spread it out some more. And I think when they sort of went to the O one style, where they increased the points, that's probably the right call. So now you can spread out between zero and say like two hundred. You can really yeah. start to flex that range. So a six control guy is obviously more valuable than 150, but now a three control guy 
he starts to become valuable. <laughs> right. So because with this, you can p- piece together a pretty good bullpen for. 500 points oh yeah easily like and that really good bullpen. and i know people that do that and, and here's a, here's a little bit off topic but strategy talk i know a buddy of mine another matt um not the matt that's talking but the different matt and he would base his points on or base his draft on points he said i'm gonna spend x value in batting x value mm-hmm. in pitching starting pitching and x value in relievers that's another way to look at it you could say like like matt's saying on the on the podcast here i'm gonna spend 500 points on relievers that's what i what i'm trying to go and i don't want to really break that i can go up or down a little bit i'm gonna spend you know 2500 on, on starting pitching and then you know i'm gonna spend 2000 on batting or something you, you gotta yeah. you can figure that out and give yourself some guidelines but again the draft starts to, to weigh itself but that might give you a little bit of um oh, i was gonna say i say guidelines again but just to keep you in line so you don't start to go oh my god i need to grab this guy like no my strategy i need to stick within here because i know it's gonna work <laughs> So next up, we have Eddie Tabensi. Tobins- I think it's Tabensi. Tabensi. So no this is the guy we want to sure. steal along with our C-speed yeah. pitcher. Um, so this is just a straight power guy. It, um, you're you're punting, and again, depending on your rules, um, on how many stolen bases you allow, or if you're doing strategy cards, stolen bases. My league does three, not including single pluses. Those those are like uh, not free stolen bases, but they don't count to your manager decisions. Um, this guy, obviously you're getting stolen on all day. Um, yeah. and I've had a guy like this on a blind draft and I, it just, it was like automatic every time. Like a speed guy is literally stealing unless they're rolling a 19. <laughs> yeah. And you, you have to really get lucky and it's like, it, it's just not, I no, there's no reason anybody's going to take him. Yeah. Cause I don't even think you would really take him as a DH with the other guys available. Yeah. I mean, right now I'm just looking at this. He's just got a big home run range. So 17 is a, is, yeah. is a huge home run range in, in, uh, in showdown Three thirty just seems pretty pricey. Um, but that's the only thing I see this guy is, is a DH. I mean, that's, I don't, I, I, I would not have this guy as my catcher. No. I mean, you got to really be getting a, like a great bat to for a yeah. plus two catcher. It's you know you got to have Garver. Next up, we have Brett Tomko. Um, I really like this jersey with the uh, the white um, and yeah. the red sleeves. I, I'm usually a fan of the black sleeves, but this one looks it pretty looks sharp. Like an old school jersey. Yeah, even though it's not, but it just kind of looks like one of their old school. Ones. Oh yeah, the red. Well, the Reds have well, they're like the oldest team, so yeah, they they have their their flex of a lot of them, and obviously they have the one where they literally don't even wear sleeves. And you got uh, Derek Dietrich, whatever his name is, just flexing on camera. Isn't Puig still there when they did that? I think so. I mean, but there's this clip of like Derek in the dugout, like curling, mm-hmm. um, and and obviously he's jacked. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this guy, you don't want him no. uh, for two thirty. I, I don't even think the home run. Now there is a guy in the Reds. We'll, Reds will talk about that has a home run that might be worth it. But for two thirty. I don't want to have a home run on my chart. And even if that wasn't bad enough, his two doubles. <laughs> yeah, and and the guy you're referring to, I don't think so either. Well, I've I've played with him, it's it's hit or miss, but that would be the guy I would yeah. have over this guy if you're gonna pick a home run. Yeah, I mean you're going up a tier at least, but it's I mean this is terrible. This is rough. You're talking about like a fifteen percent chance, like that's a lot of extra base yeah. hits. <laughs> I mean it, with the good thing, I mean, you're getting a plus of five control, so you're going to be on your chart most of the time, but your chart is awful. Really isn't that desirable. So. <laughs> so we'll just go past this guy and look over at Michael Tucker. Um, another A speed guy, very fast team yeah. here. This team, load, they speed A or speed C, it went all or nothing. Yeah. Um, so average here, now, I, you know, when I was looking at those 240 guys like Pokey Reese and Aaron mm-hmm. Boone, I'd rather have those ones. But this yeah. one has a little bit higher power range at the end, and then the no doubles, and he goes in the fifteen with a single plus. It's not bad. I just just feels a, no. a little too many points for this. Yeah, and it's. I mean, this team they just stole bases all season. That's what they must have done. I mean, and, and can you look up their did their team just have like outrageous stolen bases each player? Well, like Tucker only had eleven, but he only had three hundred forty plate appearances. Okay. What about Reese like, and um, Larkin and uh, Boone? I know Larkin had like thirty something. Okay. Uh, Pokey Reese had thirty eight, and uh, who's it? Aaron Boone. Boone and Cameron. Aaron Boone had seventeen. 
and uh, Barry Larkin had 30. What about Mike Cameron? Mike Cameron had 38. Okay, so they, they really yeah, did kind of... They ran on oh, everybody. Oh, yeah, they were moving a lot. They probably like, well, if our catcher sucks, they all suck. <laughs> yeah, like, well, we have to, they had to get in scoring position yeah. because Brett Tomko has given up, like, 30 runners. <laughs> Next up is the guy, another A-speed. Um, yeah. How, how many Greg Vaughn have? 15. Okay, well... But he, so anyway, he only, he only got caught twice though. So so that's probably what. They, so they did on a cost ceiling percentage or whatever. Yeah. But um, Greg Vaughn monster of a card. Even though I think in this picture it looks like he swung a miss. Um, <laughs> I don't like that his eyes are closed here. But awesome card. So this is the yeah. one I thought should have been the foil. Um, so we talked about like Eddie having a great home run range. You got an extra one here, but mm-hmm. you get the plus fielding. And the A speed with also being an eight. I, I, I like Greg Vaughn just sucks he's one through five out. Yeah. But I feel 45 like forty five homers. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, big it's yeah, it's a little rough. Um, but I'm thinking you draft him because you just really want to fucking hit the ball. Plus you're just you're you're locking up the outfield and, yeah. and just having an A speed is really solid again here. So just trying to get let's say you don't get the home run and you're on the pitcher's chart and you get a single or a double or a walk. You still have that opportunity to steal second, you know, right. and you got an ace B guy in second. It, I mean, it's pricey for four ten, but it's a pretty nice card. Uh, I think he's better than the other Greg Vaughn, the Tampa Bay Rays one. Yeah. Um, I don't usually play with either of these. Yeah. My, I remember like in college, my one roommate, his team was always, like, cause we just did, we built our own teams from the cards. He had, I remember it vividly cause he had FP Santangelo and then Kenny Lofton and then Greg Vaughn was his cleanup hitter. So I don't, I don't remember who was in between there, but like Greg Vaughn was, he had back to back eights with big home run ranges as three, four. And it was, it worked. Cause he yeah, saved I mean, money to, to spend on If you get the other pitching. guys on base, he just, yeah. he's just, he's just a monster. I mean, I don't usually play with him, but obviously I'm a little nervous to pitch against him. Yeah, you know, I mean, eight what's a rod of fifteen home runs. So you're yeah. any of those type of guys, they they scare you. You know, you don't want to give them the chart. And it's a huge, a huge. I mean, five home run ranges is a really big range. Did he have forty home runs that year or something? Who Vaughn? Yeah, he had forty five. Yeah, just absolute stud. I mean, you're talking about a. It's a really fun card, but I, that's why I don't understand how you give. Now I understand Barry Larkin totally get mm-hmm. that, but why does Sean Casey get over Greg Vaughn? I don't know. Yeah. So. You know, and, and it, the funny thing is how we were just talking about Eddie Tabensi, but it's like, I know they did it based on percentages, not just raw numbers, Yeah. but he only had like 20 something homers that year. Yeah. And that's, and that's sort of the Mitch Garver thing. Yeah. It's like his home run. And that's how I do it. That's why I'm always like a big fan of like the Mickey Mantle versus Babe Ruth debate. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause it's like home runs per like plate appearance is like a big thing for me. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm, I like looking at the percentages too. Cause you're like, man, this guy hit that many. Yeah, I mean, you, you, that's what you have to really look at because, I mean, even like Yelich last year um, gets hurt, you know, and, and like if these guys play the whole season, how many do they have? You know what I mean? And and you're looking at statistic thing. You don't look at milestone numbers. You look at, you know, what they did in the plate appearances that they had. Yeah. Like how many times did they walk with the plate appearances that they had? How many times did they you know, hit doubles with the plate appearance they had? So hopefully everyone else is doing that same thing. Right, and it's not like he had like a terrible, like it's not like he had too many plate appearances. He had six hundred and forty three. So, like in a six hundred plate appearance thing, he still hits like over forty. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and I usually do mine um, at four hundred. Um, sometimes mm-hmm. I've done six hundred. I use I just did my ninety six one at four hundred. I, I was gonna say we've been kind of just doing it the percent. Yeah. Yeah, I usually try to. Um, you know, bring it down to that. That's just because I've been off that old school yeah. um, algorithm, which like brings it down to four hundred, creates a um, a calculated number, and then you pr- you you well, basically multiply it by all the percentages. <laughs> yeah. So, next up, Ron Valone. So little little rough here. Now you're going down to a three one through sixteen out versus our our four that we talked about earlier, um, but you're dropping one hundred and ten points. You get the extra walk here. I don't know. It's just not, not. I, this is your typical three, three twenty yeah, to three forty type guy. Um, nothing too spectacular. 
Next up is the foil uh, Scott Williamson. Um, so this he's he, he does have closer bonus in a sense. Yeah. Um, because we had talked about earlier with Danny Gray's being a four. This is ten more points, but man, if he's if he's on, <laughs> this is Randy Johnson. <laughs> mm-hmm. So he's really good. Yeah. So Randy Johnson has the no single, no doubles as a three, one through eighteen out. This is him. So you're talking yeah. about a really dominant closer. I don't like it being a three control. I know they just gave that to people that were good. I didn't understand that because didn't he have a really, really good year? Yeah, I mean, and I'm looking at it right now. Out of, like, the 99 season, when you rank them in, like, relievers combined ERA and whip together, he was eighth. Eighth overall. So and obviously, Wa- yeah. yeah, Wagner, Rivera, Benitez, Hoffman, Fulf, Zimmerman, and then my favorite, Scott Sauerbeck. Oh. And then Scott Williamson, followed by Doug Brocale. Oh, Doug. We got a Doug Brokale sighting. Um, yeah. But, yeah. It seems like I, the guys that got threes were the ones that had the lower whip. Yes. that And that's how I think they thought of it. Like, that would be yeah. good. Like, because I think they said whip means more outs. And to mm-hmm. have more outs, you needed to have lower control. Yeah. Um, it I mean, sucks. and of the guys ahead of him, only only Scott Sauerbeck had a higher whip. Everybody else was o- almost below one. Yeah. Like, I would rather see this guy as a four or a five and just, just give him, like, a single and put those outs into walks. I wonder if it would have been too close to Danny Graves and they were like, eh. No, well, he's a tier up, isn't he? He's a tier ahead of yeah, Graves. Yeah, he's a tier ahead. So, like, let's say he's a four, one through 17 out and just make him have three walks. That's mm-hmm. that's a that's a much better pitcher, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, now, when you start to go 5, 1 through 16 out versus a 4, 1 through 17, then you can get into semantics and what you prefer. Um, those sort of go back and forth. They're really close. But I think a 3, I've seen just get hurt too much with the, with the 10s. I mean, I've just had enough experience to see it. Yeah. I mean, but I do love this card in general. Just, I mean, I've played with, like, Matt Manti. So, like, I, I'm okay with a controller or a control 3 closer. But I, it's, not who I'm, it's not who I want. <laughs> yeah, you get those nervous rolls. Oh, yeah. But, uh I mean, obviously, Billy Wagner, what, he'd be in 230, or 250? Yeah. 230. 230, so 40 more points. Yeah. Like, that's that's, that's how rough. kind of they smooshed it. They just smooshed all the start uh, the the relievers. They needed to spread it out more with the point values, and they really could have had a better feel for this. Like, this guy's like a 150-point closer, in my opinion, 160. Yeah, he probably is if they didn't have a closer bonus. So. Closer bonus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty I mean, sweet he's, picture, He's though. still solid, but... Oh, yeah. I mean, you're not going to be mad about... If, if you got them in a draft or t- different yeah. types of drafts, but I don't see them much in constructed. No, if, if, if you're constructing a team, like the way I've always done it is if I am taking a three in the bullpen, I need to have a six. Because oh, before him? For, for matchups. Because it's oh. like, oh, you know, if you get to the end of, of an order and it's like, you know, they got sevens and, and eight, even an eight on base, like you can throw a three out there and like, okay. But like when it's a 10, you hate rolling with, uh, with a three. Yeah, and, to, and, to, and what you said there, you know, if you're playing – you know, six, seven, eight, nine in the lineup. <clears throat> you bring Scott yeah. Williamson, and you're you're basically locking that shit down. Yeah. But you just you don't want to because why well, not spend the extra forty points and get Billy Wagner? <laughs> yeah, I don't think when you draft your team, you're like thinking of, well, I wonder, I, I I'm taking this guy to face six, seven, eight as yeah. a top tier closer. <laughs> like that just, that's always tough. All right, next up, uh, Dimitri Young. So you got big boy Dimitri here. Um, the only speed B. Yeah, not not nothing crazy here. Uh, he's not doesn't really hurt you too bad. Got a big double range. Yeah. Um. So he's he's solid. I I play this card in draft, but I usually don't he draft had, this player. But solid. His his walk range or his walk rate and his double rate was the same. He had a seven point three three percent. Hmm. So it's like he was hitting doubles. Yeah, I mean. It's pretty solid. I mean, it, you're, if you're just looking at like extra base hits here, you know, having a low walk range and like yeah. seven being a single, he's a solid card. And and at least he's not a C speed. I mean, that's what you're you're hoping for here. Three thirty is not bad for this kind of player either. No. Um, I feel like he's playing first base in this photo. <laughs> uh, I think that's a first it, baseman's mitt. It looks like they probably were because they're they're outfield trying to fit everybody in. Uh, he also might be in spring training here at this jersey. Well, because you know if. if if this is 99 going into before they got Griffey, it's like they had Cameron, Tucker, Vaughn, and Demetri Young with no DH. So he probably did try and learn another yeah. position. Yeah, so and interesting. It's not a bad card. I, I, I usually don't play with it, but if you had this guy, I think you'd be pretty happy with it. So. Yeah. 
Not too bad. Next up, Dante Bichette. Uh, we got the pennant run. So this is this always made me upset because they didn't have Dante like in the main set. Mm. Um, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, they they didn't have him because he would have played on the Rockies. I thought. Yeah. And so they don't have him in there. And then they put him in in, and I am a big Dante Bichette fan because uh, I loved him as a Rockies player. And then they the only only thing he's in is in Cincinnati. I'm like I wanted him to be on my <laughs> fucking Rockies team. But yeah, uh, I always crazy. loved him just because the Rockies are monsters. I, I pulled up his Rockies stats, and I mean he played a full season. Yeah, like, he had 659 plate appearances, 38 doubles, 34 homers. I mean, you can check. I'm pretty sure base. he has no showdown Rockies card. I thought card. he had like an eight. I thought he was like an eight on base. Okay, I'll I could be wrong. Check. What? Also double check. You can double check. I thought he, I, unless I'm thinking of Andres Galarraga, which I, maybe that's the guy I'm thinking of. Yeah, he did have one. Okay, so it's Galarraga. Yeah, Galarraga didn't get one. So Gal- did Galarraga play with them on that year? Because uh... he goes, he's on the Braves pennant run card. Yeah, I think he didn't play the year before because I think he was hurt. But he was on the Rockies. That I don't know for sure. I'm pretty sure. So that's the card I was thinking of, not Bichette. Yeah. I was like, yeah, because Bichette had a 350 point as an eight okay so card. it's it's the galarraga because it's the big well they always say the big four but i always like dante uh big cat and larry walker mm-hmm. um and um obviously you have like ellis burks back in the day too and Vinny castilla but um when they didn't have uh, andres on the uh, rockies i was upset so again i sorry my mistake for the uh the yeah uh, he didn't run here. he didn't play in 99 he was with atlanta in 98 Oh, but that was that. But didn't he get a pennant Colorado. run? He got a pennant run for the for yeah for the two thousand set. But he so, didn't play in ninety nine, so I think they kind of projected it off of what he did in ninety eight. But why wouldn't they give him a just an OO card? For the I wonder if his injury was that bad. They weren't sure if he was going to come back or not. Oh. Uh, so again, I I guess uh, I it is my apologies. I am wrong there. Um, but that's the guys I used to like. But anyway, Dante yeah. Bichette. Uh, you don't really like him here. Um, he's got, a lot of, got downgraded. Yeah, he's got a lot of power. Uh, we just talked about like having the fourteen double with uh, Dimitri, uh, or the three double range for Dimitri. Um, but being a seven here just kind of stinks a little bit. But two sixty, yeah. um, but no outfield ability here. It's just not a great card. <laughs> no, and it, and it sucks because it's isn't Cincinnati's park considered a hitter's park too? Yeah, like home he, run park. Like he, in general. Yeah, it's not like he went to a different, you know, like a different. Uh, well, he went. Well, if he went from Colorado, which is also right. a home run park. <laughs> but I think, if I'm not mistaken, even here in 2020, the Reds had the most home runs last year. Not, not, uh, not Colorado. Hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, because I'm, I'm just kind of looking at Bichette for what he did once he got to Cincinnati. I mean, he hit 16 homers there in 2000. Or, yeah, well, he didn't even play the whole year in, in Cincy. Interesting. They traded him huh. to Boston, but I mean, he's, he had 23 homers. So I guess he technically went down. Yeah, so they made that, that one right. Colorado. Next up is the one we were talking about earlier, the big trade, which was sending Ken Griffey Jr. to the Reds. Um, definitely started to downgrade. You know, you had the um, the Mariners version where he was the 16 home run. Yeah. Um, but he still gets his A speed nine here. A lot of outs. Um, what's his Mariners one? 590. 590. Um, obviously it's a much better version of the card, and, and it and this one was probably projected as well. And they're right. I mean, he definitely started to go down when he went to. Yeah. The he had a good year when he just went there, right? But then In I thought he quickly 2000? just dropped off. Yeah, he he really fell because he started getting hurt all the time. Yep. Yeah, it sucked. In um, 2000, his first year with Cincy, he had 40 homers, 22 doubles. Yeah. He looked a good year, but then season. he just – and then it was, like, done. <laughs> yeah. The, and, like, the year before. Like, that was his – that was the highest home run. That was the last year that he hit 40 homers. I just – it doesn't feel right to see him in a Reds jersey. No. Like, I just think of Griffey as a Mariner. He was the kid. And it just doesn't feel natural to see this card. Um, but he did okay for them that year. Um, In 05. That was like his two big years. Yeah. So a little disappointing uh, for the card. But I've seen this card drafted as well. <laughs> I just 
Yeah. You're talking about a 9A speed that can hit the ball pretty damn well. <laughs> yeah, and it's perfect because for this team, another A speed outfielder. Yep. And then on top of that, if you're building the team, I mean, you're saving 60 points here for a home run, basically. But you can take that and, you know, go get your Billy Wagner. Yeah, exactly. Next up is Danny Nagel. This is the guy I was talking about. Um, I've actually played with this guy, and it was okay. Um, I was losing more than I won because of the double, the double, double range. Um, but you get a six control guy, one through 15 out, but you got to see what I think the problem was. It wasn't the home run. Cause you just say, okay, 5% of the time they're going to hit a home run. It was the, mm-hmm. it's the two doubles. So yeah. 15% of the time they're hitting extra base hits. Yeah. And it's when you combo those together, it's just like, man, yeah, you, like for, you're still getting my, what is that? That's a tier two pitcher for a, is that tier, it's, tier I three? Is 23 is a tier zero. So 22 is a tier one, 21 oh, yeah. is a tier two. Yeah, because five through f- five, one through 15 is a tier three. That's always. Yeah. Um, and that's why I picked him up. People were like, oh, you get a lot of value for this kind of guy. For 350, you're getting a six, one through 15 out, um, tier two pitcher. But man, um, I really <laughs> think it was the doubles that hurt me more than the home runs, even though I'm sure I let them up. I just remember just like, you, could, you couldn't even catch a break. Yeah, it's. If somebody's rolling hot against you, you're just going to cry. If you can find a guy for value um, that doesn't have the home, that has the home run, and that's what's giving you the points low, but maybe has no doubles and some singles, you might be able to get away with a guy with the home run. Then I would avoid it like the plague. Like just get, yeah. unless you're in like a ten point player, just get away from the home runs. <laughs> Yeah, and what's crazy, on top of him having, like, giving up the home run, he had, like, a 1.9 homers per nine. Woo! His extra base hit ratio was an 11.6. Wow. So 11% of his at-bats, people were, or 11% of his hits were doubles, triples, and homers. Like, and that could have been also pitching, like we said, in Cincinnati. It could have been. I mean, um, it's just like, It just man. stinks. This card just, I mean, it's rough. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and like, his extra base hits per hit 57 percent of the time so more he was giving up more extra base hits than hits um so next up we have um steve paris so for basically the same amount of points you can get a three one through 16 out with no homers um i would probably rather have steve paris now now being through this and having a huge ground ball range here but um i don't really want either one of them (laughs) yeah i mean this is like where Nagel, like where his perk would be is you're probably using him as your third starter. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be matched up in better matchups than most of the time. But that home run where this guy, you're, it's just your average pitcher. Yeah. This is your standard, your standard pitcher. And then we, you looked before you're we looking at Danny Nagel and say, okay, well he's in my average pitcher range, but I'm getting three more control. Right. One less out. I just, I just want to warn you guys. It's it's rough. Fifteen percent of the time <laughs> on your chart, which is which should probably happen because you have a six control guy, right? So it should be on your chart a lot. It just fifty percent of the time is a lot. It is a it's a lot. It's a big number, especially when you say okay. So eighteen here, uh, eighteen on the R guys charts a single. That that slows them down way more. Mm-hmm. So it's just it's just rough. Anyway, next up, uh, uh, Denny's Reyes. Um. So this is not bad uh, for no. reliever. It's not again. It just stinks because, like this guy should be like a hundred points, like yeah. versus the other guys. Like if Scott you spread Sullivan it out is what one fifty, one sixty. I one, think so. We're thirty points more. Yeah. So for one fifty, one sixty point player, you get a six control one through fifteen. Again, the doubles there, but I mean, come on. Yeah. It just it just they didn't do the points that well. But I do think this card, actually, in my set, he's probably worth 130 um, because I'd have the other guy much more valuable, mm-hmm. uh, much more salary. But, man, it just sucks. Again, no doubles. That's pretty nice. Yeah, but no doubles. Jeff will take them. Yeah. It's just a little – it just sucks. Like I, I'd rather spend – if I'm spending a – if I'm going to spend on a three-control guy, I only want to spend, like, 100 points, like 90 points. Like, yeah. who's that um, – who's the guy for the Diamondbacks? Who's like Dan Plesak. Yeah. Is he a four? Four out through 15. That, 
for, for 90. Yeah, I was for 40 less points to get that guy. That's the kind of guy you're looking for in terms of value. So this kind of yeah. guy, I'm expecting to be 100 points. You know, with the no doubles, but anyway. That yeah, I is... think the three out through 16 with a double was 100 points. Yeah. So, anyway, that is the Cincinnati Reds. Um, again, I, I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, it was a little, a little um, less back and forth today because it was just me and Matt, but we were hoping that uh, um, you guys were entertained. And, uh, again, let us know what you guys think of the podcast. Let us know what other – other teams to do we're coming closer to the end i don't know how many we are done now i uh, we're probably close to halfway um but either way um we're going to continue to get through the reds i know we have other stuff on the horizon including uh interviews with some um uh, people and um we have a draft podcast coming up which i think everyone's going to really like um that get wrecked george is going to um do for us and that one's going to be a lot of fun but i really want to yeah, try to get wait. through this the oos first is our plan. Any last words, Matt? Catch on the next one so we can make some more bad predictions. There you go.